Hello, friends. Uh, welcome to the session. We would today discuss about data optimization or uh, you know prescriptive analytics, part two, if I were to call it that. Way. And um, we will try to understand a few other use cases in the context of data optimization or prescriptive analytics. Once again, the examples that we're going to look at would be based on the projects that um, I was involved directly or indirectly, either with the current company that I'm associated with or with the previous companies that I've worked with. So I tried my best to, you know, bring in those use cases. Let's see how it goes. <clears throat> so we are going to now talk about example from aviation industry. Before we proceed further, a quick recap. When it comes to prescriptive analytics or data optimization, primarily there will be three characteristics. One is data mining the decision variables. Another is to identify your objective function. And third one is to identify your constraints. For any business problem, these three things you need to identify. So from aviation standpoint, we have done a project for TrueJet. TrueJet is now defunct, but while it was operating, it was operating under a scheme of Indian government called as Udan scheme. As part of Udan scheme, these aircrafts predominantly fly from tier two, I mean, between tier two cities. So as to, you know, bring in the traffic uh, and um, make the citizens of those tier two, tier three locations comfortable with flight journeys kind of making them addicted to <laughs> shorter travel times. And okay, back to our discussion. And according to that particular Udan scheme, you know, if your flight, uh, the, say, is only 50% full, and to meet your operational expense, you probably need 80% of your aircraft to be full then the government is going to pay you for those additional seats, which will increase your occupancy percentage or load factor to 80%. Even if it is 50% full for remaining 30% of the seats, a government is going to pay you under the Udan scheme. But purchasing the aircraft, looking into the maintenance, paying to the airport authorities, air traffic control uh, control units, paying to the ground crew government, paying salaries for pilots and, um, you know, um, the various uh, support staff is going to be an expensive affair. So suppose, suppose once again, yeah, one ATR aircraft costs you $5 million and one Boeing 737 costs you $50 million. Hey, what is what are these? Let me show you. ATR is a French-based company and Italian-based company. It's a joint venture between French company and Italian company and the number 72 ATR 72 means that it has a seating capacity of 72 passengers these are you know the ATR flights that we usually see in India a few players operate that and then you have Boeing 737 these are the standard uh, flights that we usually see Boeing is from United States, and uh, we have Boeing 737, uh, which can, um, you know, accommodate up to 215 passengers. 
usually you can accommodate a lot of people. Okay. Given this context, we know now that obviously ATRs are going to cost you less and Boeing is going to cost you more. Because um, roughly three times more number of passengers is what you can carry when it comes to Boeing. All right. And the profit, say, you're going to make happens to be $1 million if you have ATR per annum. And say if you have Boeing, you make a profit of $5 million. Right? Assume that these are the things that you are aware of. <clears throat> now, your aviation company wants to grow big. Okay. They want to go big, grow big, and um, they want to purchase new aircrafts because they want to start new routes. By the way, the project that we have done for Trujet was slightly different. It was related to network route optimization to understand in which route there has to be a new uh, flight which has to fly. Now, that's a different problem, but then I'm taking this Trujet as an example here. Okay. Then um, the amount that we, I mean, obviously to purchase aircraft, you need money. And say the available budget with you is $100 million. And either you can purchase two Boeing 737 and make profit of, um, you know, $10 million per annum. Or you can go purchase uh, 20 ATR with $100 million if you want a, a purchase. And if each ATR is going to cost you $5 million, then you'll have 20 uh, which you can purchase. And if each ATR is going to give you a profit of $1 million, with 20, you get $20 million. So obviously, profits would be higher when you go and purchase ATR. Okay, that's the common sense thing. That's also a greedy approach. No, no doubt about that. But then, say your management senior leadership team um, wants some additional things as part of uh, this decision making. They want to go global. They don't want to just operate between tier two and tier three cities, but they want to go global, right? And they want to start international uh, flights as well. In that case, they'll put, you, put a constraint on you, right? They might say that, the maximum number of ATR, not Bombardier, Bombardier is, I think, Canadian company, but ATRs, the maximum number of ATRs that you can purchase is only two. They're putting that constraint on you. Why are they putting that constraint on you? They're putting that constraint because um, they have a different strategy on their mind, wherein they want to go global. They want to have flights which travel between international locations. Yeah. So that's the constraint that we have. Now the decision that we need to make is how many are we going to purchase? How many ATR are we going to purchase? How many Boeing 737 are we going to purchase? Right. Now, uh, given this entire business problem, we know for a fact that the decision variables here happen to be, the decision variables happen to be how many ATR aircrafts and how many Boeing 737 aircraft are we going to purchase? Okay, first thing. Second thing is, uh, with respect to the total available budget. So we have only, you know, 100, 100 million dollars. So number of ATR aircrafts that you purchase, that you want to purchase, multiplied by uh, $5 million, because each one is going to cost you $5 million, plus number of Boeing 737 that you want to purchase, multiplied by $50 million, because each uh, Boeing is going to cost you $50 million. So this into this plus this into this would actually give you the total amount spent. 
as of now, we don't know how many we need, we want to purchase, right? So this is another constraint, right? So this is a constraint, but even before constraint, we need to come up with the objective function, right? So objective function would obviously be to maximize the profits. Okay, you want to maximize the profits. And the profits, how do you actually calculate that? Number of aircrafts, ATR that you purchase, multiplied by $1 million because that's the profit that you get per annum per ATR uh, aircraft plus number of Boeing 737 that you're going to purchase multiplied by $5 million. And this is the profit per Boeing 737. So when you do this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this, you get this right. And if I were to just hover my mouse on this particular cell or, or double click on that, you get to see the function in uh, Excel, which is some product, some product of these two would actually give you the total profit. Okay, so this is what we would be interested to um, maximize. This is the objective function and constraints. Obviously, any problem that you solve would have constraints. Constraints can be at most or at least or equal to. And here, the amount that you can spend cannot exceed the available budget. It cannot exceed the, avail the, the budget that is available. So this is one constraint, less than or equal to constraint. And the maximum number of ATRs that you can have at most should be two. So this is another constraint. This is a business-driven constraint. This is obviously our, um, you know, uh, management constraint, basically. Now, given these things that we have, we can go to data and we can click on solver, which would pop up this particular thing that you're seeing. And we want to maximize. Um, okay, there are a lot of constraints, right? We want to... Uh, you know, set this total profit and we want to maximize that by changing what? The number of units that we purchase, which is G9 to H9, you know, ideally you select that, select this and expand, jump down. And then there are constraints that you need to add. The first constraint, which is already added by clicking on add, you can add the constraints. Okay? And the first constraint that is already added is your G9. That is the number of uh, ATR aircrafts that you purchase should not exceed maximum ATR. So this value should be less than or equal to this. If I were to just uh, remove that and add the constraint back. Okay, so I'll add the constraint. Constraint is that this value should be less than or equal to this number. Right. Let me click on OK. There we go. Then uh, another constraint is that you cannot have these values, number of aircrafts, uh, in decimals. So I'll talk about that later. I'll just remove this constraint and then talk about it later. Yet another constraint is that the total amount spent should not exceed. Okay. It should not exceed the total budget that we have. So I'll remove this, add it so that you understand. So this is uh, the value. It should be less than or equal to this particular constraint. Let me click on OK. Now, um, of course, make unconstrained variables non-negative. What that means is that the number of aircrafts that you're going to purchase cannot be negative. It can either be zero or there will be some number associated, but they can never be negative. And here you selected simplex linear program. Okay, simplex LP. And then when you click on solve, click on OK, you get to see the result. But what does the solution say? Purchase two ATR and 1.8 Boeing. How can I purchase 1.8? Either I can purchase one Boeing aircraft or two. If I purchase 0.8, only 80% of that, what would I do? Would I leave away the cockpit? Or leave away the tail, what do I do, right? So this is not uh, advisable. And the total profit is 100, but it doesn't make sense here. 
So what you are also going to do is you are going to add another constraint here. And that constraint would be to ensure that these two cells are always integers. And click on OK. Right? It These two should be integers. And then when you try solving it, the answer happens to be this. Okay. The answer is go purchase two Boeing. That's it. That's the best you can do because you already have constraint that you have to purchase maximum of only two ATR if at all you were to purchase. So you don't have money to do that. The only way out is two Boeing. And the maximum profit that you can make is $10 million. This is how you need to solve the business problem pertaining to optimization. Thank you. And in the next uh, lecture, we are going to talk about another business problem.